Hello everyone, welcome to another VHS Vault stream. How is everyone doing? Hope you're having a good one. Ah, another chill, fun one. We're going to be watching some failed TV pilots, uh, among some other things. You might recognize a performer from uh, last VHS Vault stream where we watched that episode of that failed sitcom about the dummy. One of the actors from that's in it. So excited to show you that one. And uh, yeah, Phoenix Leftist, thanks for a 75 stream streak. Halloween Town says, did you know six comes before seven and say eight after five? I didn't get that. I tried to understand what you meant. I don't get the reference. <laughs> Fox Force 5, I understood that reference. How's it going, YouTube? Hope you're doing well. If you can over on YouTube, do me a favor and like the stream. Like the stream or dislike it, whatever. I'd prefer you like it, but either one works. So, um, yeah, let's just get into it. I have a whole bunch of stuff for us to watch today. So let's get into it. Oh, here's a pilot called Venus on a Hard Drive. This is a series from, my goodness, what year was this? It doesn't say in the description, so hopefully it'll say somewhere in there. This was a show about a guy with, I believe, an AI girlfriend from the 90s, early 2000s, somewhere around there. You're just being a smart ass? Okay. Answer this one. Why is a raven like a writing desk? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to do this to you, baby, but you know... <laughs> Hold on, I gotta turn this up a little bit. Immediately great with the voice. Sorry to do this for you, baby. <laughs> Is it Dr. Claw? Don't date robots! We are pro-robosexuality in this community. Sorry to do this to you, baby, but you know too much. Venus program deleted. Delete this. Well, that's what the inside of the computer looks like. That doesn't seem great. Ooh. <laughs> oh, is that a joke? That's that's the first joke of the series? Is a pop tart popped and he went, ooh. Thought the writing on the dummy show was bad. Janerdy, thanks for a 35 stream streak, says I watched a show earlier unironically mention the metaverse and all I could think was, didn't we give up on that nonsense already? I think we did. I think we did. Ooh, Nemesaur. Fucking great. Ow, ha. Good answer. <laughs> oh, still hot. Very hot. Harry, you gotta go home and change for work. Wait, I'll be right out. Ah, Pamela. Morning, Ozzy. How was the maiden voyage? So what? Uh, you know, you and Harry, your first night together, the primo screamo, the seminal event, the inaugural ball, if you will. I don't think that's any of your business. Well, it would have been none of my business if you hadn't made all those happy barking noises all night. This show's starting strong. Oh, God. Were you listening? Pamela, the entire neighborhood was listening. <laughs> oh, hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? No. 11? <laughs> sure you don't want some coffee? No, oh, I really gotta go. I could use a warm-up. <laughs> How's your arm? It's weird. The whole thing's basically dead. It's like a big sausage. <laughs> Why'd you let me sleep on it all night? You look so comfy. I didn't want to wake you. Oh, poor baby. Maybe this will get the blood flowing. Not to the right area. It's flowing just the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Same joke. MH Darkbee says, hey Hannah, latest VHS vault. You shared the Kogel commercial. Thought you'd enjoy this. All right. Brief uh, break. Oh, Kogel meets. This is a whole thing. This is like 16 minutes long. Oh yeah. Hold on. Let me save this. I don't know if we'll do it today. But I definitely saved that, and we'll, we will be watching how they make the Kogel meats at some point. <laughs> I better go. Okay. 
Bye. Bye. I think I may be in love. Really? Who's the lucky gal? She's beautiful, smart, sensitive. Well, she certainly sounded sensitive. <laughs> of course, I haven't had sex in so long, I might just be confusing it with love. Harry, my friend, you haven't had sex in so long, you might confuse it with carpeting. I feel like you should be holding a cigar going, uh, hey, cha cha. Like, what, like, what is this shtick he's doing? This is the weirdest character. A little high Everything is a punchline. He's a character that only exists to serve punchlines. I hate that. Over there. <laughs> I like character-based humor, but I don't like when the whole character's thing is they only recite punchlines. Damn, that is a weird, sterile-looking office. You have mail. Oh, good. I love mail. <laughs> is this supposed to be the future? Because it's like, an, he has like, a, this is about like an AI program, I think, that he like is in love with or something. So is it the future, or was this supposed to be like advanced for the time? Dear Harry, had a great time last night. Hope you did too, Pam. <laughs> Don't tell me I hate Chandler Bing. Not only do I hate Chandler Bing, I'm not a fan of Friends in general. Dear Pam, I love you. Or Seinfeld, for that matter. There's some bits in Seinfeld that work, but I don't know. It's it. They're, they're victims of their own success. There's a TV tropes name for this. Basically, everything they did got copied so often that it's boring to look back at if you didn't experience it originally. You are the sun, the moon, and the stars. Mm, no, 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 no. Uh, dear Pam, I had a nice time too. <sighs> what am I doing? Hey. Hi. <laughs> well, I, I better go. I, I gotta. Run a systems check on the mainframe. So he's into her, but also there's the AI thing. I kind of felt like this was going to be sort of like a, a take on the... An early 2000s, late 90s take on the Bewitched formula. The Bewitched formula, the I Dream of Genie formula, Sabrina, whatever. You have a, a, a couple or something, or a person, who's hiding their identity, or hiding something that makes them special. Samantha having witch powers, the genie being a genie. Etc. You know the trope. So I kind of assumed it was going to be him and his AI girlfriend getting into hijinks. But is she not going to be his girlfriend? Or are they just their platonic AI friends? Do you want to get together tonight? Yeah. The ridiculously large cubicles. I could see it. They're definitely bigger than a normal cubicle, but it's also a TV set they expected to have to film in. So you kind of need that space for the camera and sound equipment. So I do get fudging it a bit. Um, how about I come over after work with some, uh, fresh vegetables and a bottle of olive oil? Yeah, that, that sounds great. Yeah. Who knows, maybe after we're done we could go out for some dinner. Huh? Think about it. Oh. Oh! This office's very white production design have not done wonders for being able to preserve it. Holy shit, is this blown out in the recording I have. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. You can't discern any detail. Lovely. This show is super horny. Yeah, yeah it is. Systems check complete. Woo! I need a break. <laughs> Oh, this is one of my favorite tropes, is... I, I, someone, has ever, someone ever done a super cut of this? If so, we should watch it sometime. 
TV shows or movies where someone's playing a video game. So, like, the prop people or the, the effects people have to throw together a fake video game for the person to be playing. Those are always interesting, because sometimes you can tell that the person who was told to make a video game so we can, you know, overlay it on the screen or do an insert shot, you can tell when they have no idea how video games work, and you look at the screenshot and you're like, how is a person playing this game? The perspective makes no goddamn sense. I love that. This one makes sense. This per Oh, wait, the controls he's using don't make sense. Holy shit, look at that. Oh. So it's clearly like a Doom-like. It's like a boomer shooter or like a Doom clone from back in the day or supposed to be. It looks more like a wallpaper that you're just kind of like gliding through. But whatever. But look at- he's- 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 it's like he's typing. Like this isn't what it looks like when you're moving a character in a 3D space. Oh. Tap, 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 tap. At least one finger should be on the forward button <laughs> consistently if you're walking. Oh, yeah. skeleton enemy. Preview for later, uh, one of the shows I also pulled up, if you like a spooky skeleton like I do, oh boy. These are the tales of the skeleton warriors. Boy, do I have a show for us to watch later. Yeah, we got some, some, some bony people. <laughs> I'm excited to watch that later. I'm a big fan of the horror aesthetic. Like, I like movie monsters and stuff. And I think skeletons are underrated. Like, in the Monster Squad. Like, there's not a, a, a famous skeleton. Like, there's Dracula. There's the Wolfman. There's the creature from the Black Lagoon. Or Gilman. Frankenstein's monster. There's even famous zombies, like the one from Land of the Dead. We need a famous skeleton. Because why don't skeletons show up in monster mashes? They should. The Screaming Skull? The Screaming Skull's pretty lame, but I'll take it. I watched the Screaming Skull on stream once. It was pretty funny. Skeletor is a villain. He's not a horror guy. He's an action villain. And also, isn't it just his head? That's like saying Ghost Rider's a skeleton. I don't know if I'd say that. Jack Skellington. Only in, like, the one scene. Or no, I was thinking of Jack Sparrow, who becomes a skeleton at the end of that first movie. Jack Skellington... Is too nice. I need a mean skeleton. Hello, princess. Anyway, yeah. so please start using more skeletons. They deserve it. Didn't you ever hear of knocking? What? Don't be coy. You got me. And here I thought I'd found the loneliest place on the internet. I knew I should have stayed at the Polly Shore website. Ooh, Polly Shore jokes, cutting edge. The good thing about Polly Shore jokes is they never get old because he's always been a punchline. Princess, is this? Watch. Biodome. It's just funny to mention. Oh, you're looking for the princess. Why didn't you say so? Hey, Squeaky, it's for you. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help Give it me. a rest. <laughs> She's all yours. <laughs> okay, so the AI woman escaped from the hacker and took up residence in this guy's copy of a video game? Couldn't she just, like, hang out on the internet? Like, I know it doesn't really matter. We're talking fictional, like, non-existent beings. But why would she be in a local copy of his game? Okay! I get it. Very funny. Slow day. Let's get Plotkin in the clean room and screw with his mind. <laughs> no one's screwing with your mind. But I will if you want me to. 
Harry. Oh, God. How did you know my name? Plotkin, Harold A. Born 4972. Father Albert, Mother Jane. High school locker combination, 4972. AOL password. Why would that be anywhere? Why would that be on the internet for her to access? I don't even remember my Four, locker combinations. 4972. ATM pin number, 4972. I think I detect a pattern. Oh, here's an interesting nugget. You used your credit card last night to buy a box of multicolored condoms. Why is every joke just adults have sex? That's not even a joke. It was Pam Clark, wasn't it, party boy? How did you... How'd I know? You have mail. And you're not the only one who can read it, bucko. Ooh. What are you? I'm a top-secret virtual reality program designed by the government to break into high-security databanks and retrieve... Question, why did the government make you, like, the horniest person ever? Classified information. Your tax dollars at work. <laughs> this can't be happening. You can't be real. Oh, I'm real, all right. The moon landing, that's another story. <laughs> the moon landing wasn't real? You didn't hear it from me. Goodbye, Harry. Help me, help me, help me, help me. I want to know what the budget per episode was to animate the poorly done, like, early 2000s animation for the... Oh, God, what's her name? Venus. How much did it cost them for one episode to animate her? Too much. Ozzy. Take off the headphones. I need to talk to you. No need to yell. You're not plugged in. <laughs> How do you know when you're going crazy? You're asking me. Well, who else am I going to ask? Well, how about Captain Snappy? <laughs> Captain Snappy? I think you're fine. Hey, can I borrow 20 bucks? No! 11? 11? No! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm plugging this in. What is it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Where did it come from? A squat young fellow with shorts and a clipboard. <laughs> okay, software is loaded. Is it a webcam? Press... Or is it going to project the horrifying 3D lady into their apartment? This is going to be so... Please, please project her into the real world. Ooh. Perfect. Ready. Thanks. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. I love it. You see what I see? This is just shittier weird science. Or pixel perfect. Though Pixel Perfect came later, admittedly. Uh-huh. I was talking to Captain Snappy. <laughs> they already tried to make a weird science TV show. It was terrible. I don't like Weird Science the movie, though, so I'm the wrong person to ask. Boy, and I thought I lived in a crummy little box. <laughs> oh, man. It followed me home. Can we keep it? I'm Venus. It's an acronym. I can a little bit excuse the, the guys from Weird Science being absolute creeps because they're like teenagers. I shouldn't give them that, you know. But like, it's realistic for teenagers in the 80s to be scummy. These are adult men. Please don't leer at the horrifying CG woman who has appeared in your apartment. Your first thought isn't to scream. It's to fucking Riz? <laughs> For virtually enhanced neuro-universal software. Hello. I'm Ozzy. That's an acronym for octagonal zebra zipped inside elephants. <laughs> they, excuse me, Miss Virtually Enhanced Neuro Person. How did you get in my living room? Oh, heck, Harry. She came out of that thing. <laughs> Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you so much. 
She's all right, but she's no Edie. Joker wouldn't even talk to this AI, right? He sure is cranky for someone who just had sex for the first time in 14 months. <laughs> Jesus Christ, every joke is just sex, sex, sex. These people have sex. Sometimes they don't have sex. Sometimes they do have sex. Did you know about sex? It's been that long. How did you know that? I told you. Every computer database, every phone call, every credit card transaction, they're all right here. Which is why the people who created me want to destroy me. I got the same problem with my folks. <laughs> anyway, I figured I'd lay low with you guys until the heat's off. Well, the heat should be off for about three days. I forgot to pay the bill. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. She can't stay here. Why not? She doesn't take up any space. Hey, watch the hands, Buster. <laughs> it's in our lease. There's no kids, no pets, no... incredibly beautiful holograms. She is... This isn't even like a Jessica Rabbit situation, which is funny anyway, because she's drawn to such ridiculous proportions. Like, that's the joke. This is worse than, like, toy... Like... Toy Story looks better than this. If you told me you thought that Bo Peep from Toy Story 1 was fuckable, I'm not going to agree with you, but I'm not going to be mad at you. If you look at this horrifying rendering and tell me you want it, I'm concerned for you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You'll, ha you'll have to lay low with someone else. But I don't know anyone else, Harry. I'll introduce you. <laughs> no, I think this is perfect. Who'd think to look for a sophisticated top-secret program in a dump like this? Not me. <laughs> think. People have a way of mysteriously disappearing for knowing one teeny tiny government secret. She knows all of them. Yes. Think of all the cool stuff she can tell us. What's really happening in Area 51? Who killed JFK? Why are black helicopters dumping genetically altered frogs into the Colorado River? Cyber Chicks Day! Can you lend me 20 bucks? <laughs> oh, God. Spam. Quick. Get in the closet. Haven't fully grasped the concept yet, have you? The mic wasn't muted. I was just too quiet. It might not have picked it up. <laughs> oh, no. Someone else heard it. Not one word about this. What word would I pick? Hey there, hold there, hi there. Everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Just uh, heard some troubling news about the water supply. <laughs> What's going on, Ozzy? Uh, virtually nothing. You want a horror movie about this situation? Um... I have one for you. Maybe. What was it called? It was a slasher movie from the 90s. It's not quite the same. It's about a video game. One of the actors in it is someone I recognize. Give me a sec. I know I own it, but I'm not going to go get it. 90s slasher movie video game. It should come up. Brain Scan. Brain Scan's the closest one I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe try Brain Scan. 90s slasher. Hello? You're not gonna tell her about me, are ya? No, uh... This is not a very good time. Why don't you call back later? Who is that? I was... my mother. <laughs> Scooby-Doo in the cyber chase. Yeah, that one'll work, too. Just let it ring. Harry, it's your mother. No, 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 the machine... Harry. You have to get rid of Pam. We've got plans to make. <laughs> Who's this? Um, this is a computer solicitation for the Sunday Chronicle. <laughs> if you've already received the Chronicle, oh, press please. one. I can explain that. Okay, so the, the computer woman has immediately ruined this guy's life. That's great. Uh, uh actually... Can I get back to you on that? <laughs> Goodbye, Harry. Oh, Pam. Pam, wait!
Don't worry, Harry. I didn't like your mom at first either. <laughs> Pam, you gotta believe me. I am not seeing another woman. I keep telling you, the person on the phone wasn't even real. She was some kind of cyber girl. Forget it, Harry. <laughs> you might as well be talking to a wall. What happened to you? Where have you been? Helping our friend Ozzy. Helping our friend Ozzy how? Twenty dollars. Correct. I'm checking. Affirmative. Okay, here we go. Come on, Mama. Yes. We have a winner. Please take your receipt, Ozzy. Oh, thank you, Venus. <laughs> Ninety million. Eight hundred and forty-one thousand. Sixty-two dollars. Okay, let's try forty. <laughs> That's actually a funny joke. Something I appreciate about old shows like this, when we watch them, is that usually in like a 30 minute, 20, 30 minute show, even if it's quite unfunny, usually you'll get one joke that I'm like, okay, that's a joke. I see why the person who wrote this is trying to be a professional writer. <laughs> I don't know. That was simple, but it got me. You don't think that... Anyone is going I feel like Ozzy should be the main character. This guy sucks. This guy sucks a lot. Notice part time. And like, I feel like he's gonna be a dork about this. Like, I think it's funnier. If you were to do this premise, first of all, you need to tone down how horny it is. Like, I'm not a prude. I get it. But like, it's just not funny. And it just comes off as weird and desperate. And like, you're trying to be edgy. So tone it down. Um, not much you can do about the graphics, so you gotta lean into how creepy it is and acknowledge it. Um, I think it's funny if she is trying to do the sexy thing, but if, like, Ozzy was the main character and he was completely blasé and did not care about it at all, that would be funny. But this guy is just, like, a dork, and not in, like, a fun way. He's a dork, not a nerd. Like, a nerd is fun. A dork is kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean video store clerk seems neurotic he seems a little too neurotic to have this be a fun premise suddenly has 90 <laughs> you are such a nitpicker no wonder pam's not talking to you she's not talking to me because of you you have to tell her that i'm not seeing anyone else i really wish i could help you harry but that would compromise my security what security you're not even real you're some kind of whacked out computer program. Is that what you think? That really hurts, Harry. <laughs> Come on. Just, uh, please don't cry. Don't cry. Well, you I'm... are firmly at the bottom of the uncanny valley. If anything, you crying is going to make him want to delete you more. I wouldn't recommend it. I'm sorry, but unlike some people, I am in touch with my feelings. Oh, what? You're saying... Well, that was kind of funny how the tape kind of fucked up when she got mad. I'm not. She's reaching through the recording. Well, have you know that I am in regular touch with my feelings. Really? Then how come you can't tell Pam you love her? Excuse me? Dear Pam, I love... Does he? They slept together once. And, like, it seems like their relationship's, like, relatively new. I don't know how well they know each other. You. You are the sun, the moon, and the stairs. <laughs> you really need a spell check program. <laughs> That was personal, and I deleted it. Well, I de-deleted it. <laughs> That's it. I've had it. I want you out of my life. Oh, I see. A gig of RAM, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, Harry, see you in the funny papers. <sighs> Come back. I still need you to talk to Pam. Come back. I know you're in there. Come back, please. Here, hard drive deleted. <laughs> no! Harry? <laughs> what do you want the pizza oven? I'll just put it on the pool table, my good man. 
No more paying for pizzas, Harry. <laughs> You're never gonna get away with this, you know? Harold. Okay, so I know it's a comedy, so asking, like, someone's gonna notice that 90 million that got taken. Where'd it come from? But let's even throw that away. It's a comedy. Who cares? Why would they still be in this apartment? If you're going to make them rich in the first episode, why aren't they in a nicer apartment? I don't know. Just if you're going to do it, do it. If you insist on being so negative, I'm not going to let you drive my Humvee. <laughs> Pam, listen. Oh, she hung up on me again. Well, have you tried using a fake voice? <laughs> this sucks. Well, look on the bright side, Harry. I'm rich. <laughs> Pam, she turned her machine on. Where do you want the pool table? Uh, in the kitchen, fellas. Pool table? Ozzy, you already bought a pool table. Not a bumper pool table. <laughs> Pam, the voice on the phone belonged to some kind of cyber woman. I know now this sounds she's amazing. she's a woman. But she's just a computer program. I mean, she looks really hot. But she's still No, not she real. doesn't! Why does everyone think this disgusting Pixar nightmare is hot? Of course you can't tell her that. She's very moody. Well, sure, maybe it's her cyber time of the month. <laughs> I don't know how much time I have before your machine cuts me. Good. <laughs> Hiya, Pam. <laughs> you tell me, can you keep a secret? <laughs> I'm going over there. Well, take a jacket. It's chilly out. <laughs> Ozzy, I'm going to talk to Pam, not slap her on one of my bitches. That's <laughs> <laughs> Christ! Well, I didn't expect that joke, I'll give you that. Gentlemen, pick nine and grab a stein. Stop. Something wrong? <laughs> no running in the courtyard. Okay. People thought pointy boobs Laura Croft was sexy. I guess that's true. <sighs> you the satellite TV guys? I want the biggest dish you got and unscramble everything, including the Spice Channel. All this time he was telling the truth? Unbelievable. You aren't unbelievable. The Air Force has developed such sophisticated stealth technology, they can't find any of the planes. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm confused now, because it kind of seemed like the normal premise of something like this to me would be, he and his roommate are aware of this, the love interest is oblivious, regularly, almost every episode, there would probably be some kind of miscommunication involving trying to hide the AI, and then by the end, the AI would help patch things up, you know. So, okay, if she knows about the AI, what's the premise of the show? What are the antics they would have gotten into beyond this episode? I don't know. Okay, I see why you need to hide out. But, I mean, of all the people that you could choose from, why pick Harry? I could ask you the same thing. Good point. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that you decided to pop in. Me too. It's nice to have a girlfriend to interface with. Pam, listen to me. I'm going to tell you the truth. Okay. Venus is not a computer program. She is a baggage handler for Air France. And I just broke off with her. I just sent her packing. Au revoir, babe. I've got a beautiful American girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, isn't that sweet? He's lying to me. Not a thing anyone has ever said. But when you thought he was lying before, you got angry. I don't understand. Well, that's because you were programmed by Matt. Had you not? Oh, fuck off! Fuck all the way off! That. Okay.
come on. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit much, isn't it? <laughs> Dad. Well, um, could you just give us a moment, please? At least they tipped their hand to the fact that she's clearly designed by some sort of, like, desperate nerd that hasn't actually talked to women. <laughs> sure. What is this show? It was called Venus on the Hard Drive. This was an unaired pilot. Never made it to air, which is good. You forgive me? I don't know. I, I promise no one will ever come between us again. Well... Skip is over thanks for a 55 stream streak, says tragic. I've seen worse shows. I've seen a lot better, though. That's so beautiful. I think I'm gonna cry. So, are we happy? Yeah, this is great. I feel right at home. Good. Oh, by the way, I love what you've done with your hair. Thanks. I also have it in fire engine red. Eggshell blue. Creme de mer. Excuse me. Venus, do you think we can have a little bit of privacy? Actually, Harry, given the government's infrared satellite technology, you can't have privacy anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> Wonderful. Maybe you could do something useful, like find out what the FBI did with my roommate? Oh, I forgot to tell you. They let him go as soon as they found out he works for the CIA. But he doesn't work for the CIA. According to the FBI computer, he does. <laughs> Enchante. Eckleberry. Oswald Eckleberry. Could you perchance lend me, say, 20 drachma? <laughs> Enchanté. Again, the, the roommate is the best part of the show. He was okay. They probably could have found a show for him to be in other than that. <laughs> okay, so that was that one. Not good. Oh, what's next? Oh, this one looked horrifying. This one's for the furries. I also just want to point out that it was directed by someone named Nicholas J. Furris. Hi, Zubaroos! It's me, Lookout Bear! Thanks so much for bringing home a little bit of Zubily Zoo! Van Gogh and I are so excited to see you! Boy, I'll say. Now, we know you're getting ready to Why does he look like the Rum Tum Tugger? Watch Homework Zoobly Zoo <laughs> video, Zoobles Camp Out tonight. But look out and I wanted you to know about all the other Zooberific adventures that are waiting for you. Yeah, like the time we all got together and formed that band, we played music and had a great time. With a hip hip hooray, a hip hip hooray, the, the music, music we did play. play. We play it loud as ever we can, the music that we play. <laughs> Hurry up, it's always on the run. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. So many things have got to get done. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. The moment she gets out of bed, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. She always goes for speed ahead. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. If you move like a cow, move like okay. now. He's, he's literally doing the rum tum tugger shit. It's a kid's show. Is, am I crazy? He's rum tum tugger. You bleat 
like a sheep, show me how. If you chatter or crow, you'll be the star of the show in the fabulous animal band. Stop doing this! You're on a children's show! And how about the time we had the- The Rum Tum Tugger is a curious cat. County Fair! Oh boy, we had a biting contest! You love this show as a kid? Are you okay? A chili cook- What's Rum Tum Tugger? Uh... I can't play much of this, but uh... Rum Tum Tugger is the sexiest of the cats from Cats? I'm just putting it out there. He's got an energy. It. He's a he's a, he's a he's a horny cat. <laughs> it's not an appropriate energy for a children's show, is what I'm saying. And he he it's given that energy. And I learned how to square dance. So come on down and bring a friend. You'll wish the fair would never end. Come on, everybody, get along. Rabbits roving over the ground. Rabbits jumping up and down. They're so quick and they're so fast. Rabbits, rabbits, hopping fast. Over again is oh, one these are eight. ads for other ones before. <laughs> the sun shines high above, every heart is full of love. Every minute, a dream is coming true. In Zubali, 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 Zubali. <laughs> Vegan teacher has not reviewed this. Then go paint the rainbow <laughs> for the most that? plays the tune. And look out, shares and ventures with us every afternoon. Okay, I can't do more of that. <laughs> That's all I got. Systems. a pilot from 1990 called Hollywood Dog. Oh, Hank Azaria's Hollywood Dog. When Hollywood Dog isn't on screen, everyone should be saying, where's Hollywood Dog? my needs he wants to have a family we're opening with a cuckolding that's always good right now Bing and I are we're getting married I still want to be friends <laughs> make a big mistake <laughs> I understand your needs think of what your kids will look like why Hollywood? There's no future for me here, Ma. Maybe Suzanne breaking my heart and causing me to puke my guts out all night was for the best. I want to make something out of myself. I can do that, now. I love you.
I busted my chops to get you this gig at the Bahama Lounge tonight. The place is gonna be crammed with big shots, agents, record execs. Oh god, is Hollywood Dog like a producer? I thought he was gonna be an actor. Is Hollywood Dog the the Harvey Weinstein of dogs? Any of those people are coming. What? I think the phone's broken, Dave. I thought I heard you say you were canceled. You're number one, babe. You don't burn bridges with the big boys. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, loose screw. It's part of your charm. <laughs> Sweetie, I'm strapped for the red. Hello, Dave. Hey, dog. Got a minute? Hold it, I'm next. You're not allowed to just walk into your tenant's house. What are you doing? Take it. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute, you're a dog. You're always naked. Yeah, it's not a puppet, it's animated. I'm curious how the animation looks. I'm sure it's no Roger Rabbit, but... Oh, that's it. That's him. Okay. What a bonehead. Twins. Oh. Hollywood Dog is brought to you by Extra Strength Excedrin, the headache medicine. When I mean, that does track. <laughs> they knew. Have a big headache. I'm already annoyed. Relief. Extra Strength Excedrin from Bristol Myers Squibb. <sighs> if my husband's working late and my kids are sleeping and my dog's been walked, why do I have this pounding headache? Anyway, I took to Excedrin. It's all it'll take. The fuck is this? See the light of a new CoverGirl makeup. Oh, I thought that was the same so ad. I thought that was literally the same woman, and it was like, yeah, Excedrin not only fixes my headache, it makes me in like I'm in a different commercial. Light so faultless. It's That's called on me. perfecting makeup. Now feel the light. Of color so weightless, it feels beautifully bare. New perfecting makeup in a pump. The light makeup from CoverGirl. As close to perfect as you can get. We got the Toyota Camry because we both need a car with a lot of room. Mrs. Martino has like about 10,000 suitcases full of junk she packs in their car for trips. When we travel, Pat and I both have a lot of stuff. But it's never a problem loading the Camry. Mr. Martino has like about one suitcase this big, but he gets to drive. <laughs> I love what you do for me, Toyota. <sighs> My headache's gone. Just two Excedrin. That's all it took. Honey, I'm home. Daddy, Daddy. For powerful headache relief, take the... <laughs> What was that one? Power of Excedrin, the headache medicine. Saturday, experience what it's like to be a cop in oh, a city no. that never sleeps. Cops returns to Las Vegas in a one-hour special. Boo. No show, no show, no rent. No rent, the dog is history. Hey, Wayne, <laughs> I just painted that. Well, time to whip up a new masterpiece. Maybe something postmodern like apartment for rent. Do I want to hear this? Mom, tonight's featured act, the so-called Dave Larock, just bagged out on the dog. <sighs> there goes the rent. Again. Unless you bounce the dog. Louise, you wouldn't toss the dog out, would you? Sure she would. Honey, I like Hollywood Dog as much as you do. His but name he is Hot... Like, it's, 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 he's, it's not a title. His name is Hollywood Dog. Okay. He owes me three months' rent. I have to draw the line somewhere. I'm really gonna miss his wet little schnoz. He's not... ...not gone yet. He'll think of something. Hollywood Dog enjoys running on empty. Dave LaRock. I throw him a bone. He treats me like a dog. And who is Dave LaRock? He could be anybody. So were there other cartoon characters in this world? 
or is it just this one cartoon character that's alive? He could be that guy. Because so far I've not seen other animated characters, like Roger Rabbit. Is he even supposed to be animated? Like, are they supposed to be seeing him like he's a real dog and he's just depicted like that for our convenience? Like, what? Uh, I don't... And the winner of the Hollywood Boulevard Chamber of Commerce new arrival celebrity raffle and big gift giveaway is... This guy! I'm a little confused how you can have access to the Toon Force and not be rich, but okay. I'll get this. Hey, that's my guitar! What do you, you got your rock collection? <laughs> yeah, you, you caught the phrase. Yeah. Who are you? Hollywood Dog. Oh, sorry, I, it's just I never met anybody so animated. <laughs> Got a name, kid? Bodine, Frank. Whoa, your parents had a sense of humor. So, Bodine, what brings you to Hollywood? Well, I, I came here to write some songs, make some music, you know, uh, be someone. Some chick dumped you. For a rich guy in a Corvette. Yeah, dames. Yeah, dames. <laughs> Hollywood dog gonna turn him into a red pill I word. Oh, nice shoulders, toots. Thanks, Hollywood dog. Shannon Tweet. I saw her in Playboy. Yeah, cool your toolbox, kid. She's an actress now. So, Shannon, I've got this screenplay for the right price. I give you the first peek. Call me. Don't toot me, babe. Your clock is ticking. <laughs> You know Shannon Tweed? This is fucking terrible. Like normally I you know, I pick things to actually be funny. Like usually they're they're, you know, a little offbeat, but like they're fine for the most part. This is one of the worst pilots we've probably seen on this show. The editing is really bad. The pacing is fucking dog shit. Like this is like an actual bad badly edited like show. And get rid of her. So, uh, about that <laughs> Hollywood dog died on the way back to his home right? planet. Who, me? Yeah, you. <laughs> you got in the car. Uh, it's cheaper than a cab. Right it. Hey, you playing me for a sap, kid. Who, me? You quick, kid. I really I like, like when they combine, like, live action and animation, too, but this is just done so poorly. Like that. They're not even trying to smooth over, like, the layers. They're just like, nope. Cartoon. <laughs> Right on top of the live action. Not gonna make it look like they're interacting at all. So, where you bunking, Bo? I'd like to stay when I was placed on the Sunset Strip. Well, here's one, uh, Venus de Milo Arms. It's the pits. I got a spare room at my place. Oh, no, that's, that's pretty fancy. Oh, I got money. You win this one, Harold Everman. We're home. Welcome to the Bahama Lounge Hotel. That's my buddy Maurice on the skins. Ooh, today's your lucky day. Behold the vision. I'm sorry, the... The hotel has a... Percussionist in the <laughs> lobby? Not someone on the piano or something, just someone just... It's kind of playing plodding background investigatory music all day. All right. <laughs> Make that double vision. Who's that? Scoping me out. At least he's looking right at me. Oh, nice earring. When do I get the neck? These are not your earrings. I bought the fuchsia earring. Right, like you can even spell fuchsia. <laughs> he was definitely looking at me. Hey! It doesn't go? seem like they have a whole band, though. I think it's just the drummer. Yeah. Can we have a little chat? I gotta go. Schmoozy. I don't find the classy Kuzbo sleep paralysis demon funny. I found that funny. I'll be right back. This was 1990. You there you go. There was a little interaction there. All right. You At least there was a little thought put into that shot. Zip it, Fido. I always wear this dress. Really? Well, you must have washed it or something. It looks fresher. The colors are brighter. Boy, I can see myself. You know, I did use a new fabric softener. 
Mm. Not this time, dog. Mm. I hear Dave will rock cancel. You trying to hang me out to dry? Louise, Louise, please don't wrinkle your moo moo. There's gonna be a show tonight. That is Dave LaRock. It is? Oh, <laughs> hi there. Mm. Is it cool to ask for a picture and an autograph? Not right now. He's a little jumpy. His latest fiance just checked into the loony bin. She barbecued her entire family. It was in People magazine. You know, the coping section. Not the coping section. <gasps> After the shock treatments, I thought he'd cancel, but then he got to look at that electricity bill. You get that poor boy upstairs right now. He's got a show to do tonight. Whew. What's this called, Hollywood said, dog? Just give me a minute to polish the silver. It's a part. Sorry, I need to use the bathroom real quick. Be right back. Just be a couple minutes, or not even a couple minutes, like a minute. I'm seepy. You're gonna see this dog in your dreams tonight? Would you prefer the dog or the virtual lady from the first thing we watch? You actually thought that she was cute, so you know what? I know the answer. You don't have to answer that. Toopy. <laughs> Here, boy. Wait, you want some Hollywood dog? Show him the rope trick I taught you. Okay. Give me your hands. Tyler, it's not polite to hog tie strangers. This is not without consent. My sister. She's single. Beat it, Houdini. This kid also looks like live action Bart Simpson. I say also because there was in the last time we watched a uh, VHS uh, stream, there was another live action Bart Simpson character. Of my act. <sighs> well, lucky I stopped him before the honey and the red ants. <laughs> uh, are you new here? Yeah, I'm Bodine Frank from Nebraska. Oh, the cheese state. That's Wisconsin. Oh, right, right. But they're close, aren't they? <laughs> well, I'm Rhonda. I have to go upstairs and help my brother with his homework dangling participles. Who would win in a fight, Venus or Hollywood Dog? The answer is I don't think they'd fight. I think Venus and Hollywood Dog would have disgusting, raw sex. It would be awful. Right after I finish bumping- They're just both very disturbingly horny characters. Into the shrub. Well, bye. Turned up hot thermostat. <laughs> it's open. Did you write these songs? Yes, and they're personal. Yeah, excuse me for caring. What is that? Firewood? I'm saving up for a new one. Hey, 
This is Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk. No, I'm kidding. And that's you. Uh-huh. Do you have to yeah. say this is Lou Ferrigno as the Hulk? You could have just said this is Lou Ferrigno. It's the thing most people know him from. It's Lou Raw? This is Lou Ferrigno from Pumping Iron. Oh, yeah. Mary Lou Retton. <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Such move. Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh-huh. St. Louis. Yeah, it's the Lou Wall. You really are a celebrity. Celebrity slash promoter, entrepreneur, actor, musician, not to mention impressionist. Impressionist? Can you do Roger Rabbit? Not on this budget. So There's the one joke. There's the one joke of the thing that I'll laugh at. Oh, you like that the place? Funny. It's great. I'll take it. Hold it, kid. This is my room. Your room's in there. Nice, huh? I should've known. A guy from out of town, take him for a ride, stick him in a closet. What do you think I am, an idiot? Nice try, dog. But you can't leave. Watch me. But wait, you, you didn't see the... I, I did... What? Yikes, whoops, holy cow, oy vey, gadzooks, help. Why me? Stop me any time. Oh, no, it's Kurtz. Ooh, SOS, 911. <laughs> For the past six years combined, Pontiac has outsold. It's so funny to me that you'll see 90s car commercials and it'll be like the most rockin' fucking beat ever. Like it'll just be a banger of a song and they'll show you unironically like the ugliest cars you've ever seen in your life and act like they're cool looking. <laughs> 90s cars, man. I don't know why. Is the 90s the ugliest decade for vehicles in the United States? Every brand like, hot take. The 90s were the not kind. <laughs> Spirit advanced technology. And pure driving excitement. Oh my god, is that the Patrick Stewart? Sounds like him. With big cash back, like up to $2,000 on Grand Prix. And that makes the real winner you. Wait, is there an actual reason that 90s cars were so fucking ugly? Was it that there were, like, new fuel efficiency regulations or something that required more aerodynamic designs and they hadn't quite figured out how to, like, combine the aerodynamics with a decent aesthetic yet? Or am I just reaching? Five different meats piled on two medium pizzas. For some it's a dream. For others, their worst nightmare. <laughs> Little Caesar's new Meets a Meets a Pizza Pizza. Five different meat toppings, all for $9.99. So why pay $9.99 for one meat pizza when you can get two for $9.99 at Little Caesar's? It's like getting one pizza free. Meets a meat. I'm gonna be honest, like, holy shit, Little Caesar's has gotten cheaper relative to this. <laughs> I can go get a Little Caesars pizza. Like, this is before they did their $5 hot and ready thing. I guess I don't know. It probably still isn't $5. But, like, when that started, it was $5. Pizza. And that was years after this. Decades after this. At least a decade. You don't have to like Little Caesars, but you should respect the founder because the founder is based. The founder of Little Caesars paid the rent for um Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife's uh, or no, no, it wasn't. It was, was it Rosa Parks? Was it Rosa P Baja knows this. One sec. Oh, someone else says Rosa Parks. Paid Rosa Parks' rent when she uh, needed it in older years. Happy anniversary. Hey, Royal Blue. Electric Blue. Ooh. Huh. My shirt's not too electric anymore. Well, maybe the fish will like it. If your colors are fading, help protect them. Try Cheer with Color Guard. As time goes by, you can see the difference Color Guard makes. Cheer with Color Guard. It's not just a game, it's a hilarious adventure. Last one standing is King of the Mountain, Saturday on Fox. Hills is the place for Girls, we've got your jean, plus size, and preteen. Fuller cut, that's girls plus. Feeling in between? Try size preteen. 
need to buy some jeans. Hey, keep it clean. Designed with your shape in mind. Unironically, I don't think any of my jeans fit because I lost a bunch of weight. different girls <laughs> need different <laughs> jeans. For back to school shopping. Yeah. Is this another the car Nissan commercial? Has every... How many cars did they did people buy in the nineties? Half these it. commercials have been for the fucking Pontiac. To find in a true sports car, a one hundred forty horsepower fuel injected engine, advanced multi link suspension, and rear wheel drive. But what sets the Nissan two forty SX apart? is that it does something very few other sports cars can do. Go from zero to 60 in just under $14,000. Right now, you can save with great factory-to-dealer incentives on 1990 models. Did I mention the first week was free? Okay, two weeks. Save it! Love interest neighbor. Sorry. I hope that isn't your favorite shirt. Oh, what a shame. And that's the really stain. Whoa, looks like you could use a shower. I know, use mine. Rhonda, no starch. All right, a shower, and that's it. Please, I'll feel so much better. Slow down, you two. Hey. Gonna see my game in... Night, uh, gonna see the something rhymes with night. Oh, it sinks like a seal. Um, hey, uh, kid, I'm gonna go get us some chow. Uh, can I borrow a couple of bucks? There's a five in my wallet. Thanks. See ya. Wait, is he upset that it's dog shampoo? <laughs> well, Does dog shampoo damage your hair? Well, well, like, I obviously wouldn't <laughs> go buy dog shampoo, but I guess I just assume it's shampoo? I don't know. Well, 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 well. This must be the incredibly overpaid Dave LaRock. <laughs> Hi. I have a club soda. Ah, sure you can handle it? <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um... The dog says you're a regular Bo Diddley. You said that? <laughs> uh, that's one dollar for the club, sir. My money's missing. <laughs> 1990 was a different world, huh? He doesn't have cash and he doesn't have a single debit or credit card? Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> really? I don't know where the dog finds you guys. What's so funny? Huh. Your money's gone. The dog's not here. Smell the coffee, Mr. LaRock Star? <laughs> Dwayne, leave him alone. His girlfriend's just been committed. Suzanne? Oh, don't be embarrassed, honey. Hollywood Dog told me all about it. It was in People Magazine. Who was on the cover? Excuse me. Shame, Dwayne. You upset him. Now, what do we do? We, we do, do something, something nice. nice. I'll make him a sandwich. What's up? Nothing, nothing. I'm broke, locked out, and just been played for a sucker. The dog, right? Yeah. You'll get used to it. I did. Listen, uh, I'm making tacos. You hungry? Thanks. I, I want to be here when my buddy gets back. Tacos. Extra spicy. <sighs> Come on. We'll leave the door open. Guacamole dip was great, but uh, Setsu says, Hannah, I'm sorry, but I'm kind of liking this. Not allowed. We aren't allowed to have different tastes, don't you know? Jalapeno. That's fine. Jalapenos. They make everything, you know, hotter. Yeah. Hotter. I wrote that song. He's back. Ziggy, Ziggy, you be the agent. Let me worry about where the song came from. You little weasel. You ripped me off? Tell so the guitar is animated too. Did he have to have someone specially make that? Or is it part of his body? Was he born with it? 
The metaphysics of the animation thing is confusing to me. The lies about my girl, and now you steal my songs? Fire in the trash can, Zig. I'll call you back later. Where's my money? My kid sister's going blind. She needed a new set of headlights. Somebody had to pay the doc. Well, uh, all right. How about this? How about the truth? Right, 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 right. Hey, I booked this stupid, no-talent schlockosaurus into the lounge tonight. He crapped out on me. So I met you, figured I could pass you off as him. Uh, hence the hospitality, huh? You're welcome. Then I heard you singing in the shower. Frankly, I panicked. So I booked... Is the joke gonna be that he can sing anywhere but the shower, and he's actually a good singer when he's not in the shower? Borrowed. You're the opposite of what it normally is. Oh, money went down to Shecky's World on Music to get Loretta, that's my guitar, out of hock, in case I gotta back you up. So what do you say, kid? Are we on for tonight? The guitar was Did like I? the placenta. The only yeah. thing I'm doing is dragging your mangy butt down to Shecky's World of Music and getting my money back. I gotta take myself for a walk. Collar and everything, huh? Yeah! Ah! Dwayne, how long have you been here? Long enough to hear your entire scam, dog. <laughs> you fraud. <laughs> yeah, me too, Jerry. Is Dave Larock? <laughs> You're not squirming out of this one. Whoop, 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 whoop. Jump back, Dwayne. Ooh, that's a good way to put it. Between Mo Sislak and Duffman. That's pretty on the nose. I think that's about right. That sounds right. Told you that to protect his true identity. Because I can kind of hear the lazy Duffman. You know? You know? It's got a little bit of that. This thing, but it's kind of also got the Mo. It's got the Mo, but also kind of extended on the words. Yeah. Fudge is out. He's got vision. Limited, I admit, but he writes great songs. Yeah, you nailed it. I'm not buying the blind shit. It's me, Hollywood Dog. I got music in my bones and rhythm in my veins. Point me to the stage. Where are you, dog? Oh, no. Take Did someone down, give dog. him drugs? Come on. Hey, where ya? Where ya? Oh, I got a biscuit for you. <laughs> he was downstairs. He wasn't blind. The, guy, the, the kid's a pro. Oh, 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 it doesn't look oh, 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 for pity. Oh, look on my nose. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. What are you oh, waving at? Do a sound check. Fire up the oh, lights. Oh, 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 blind lazy Bo Jackson is going on. Oh, thank you, kid. You really saved my tail. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Mm hmm You really like my songs? Yeah. You like the guitar? I should. I probably paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, I like the guitar. So about tonight, kid, will you do it? I'll go on tonight, but as Bo Dean Frank, and I'll sing my songs my way myself. Trust me, kid. You're going to see your name in lights. That's it. What? What? Name in lights. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dwayne Holtz, manager of the beautiful Bahama Lounge Hotel and your host for this evening. And for the first time in Hollywood, the probably not even slightly myopic Bodine Frank? Hi, I'm uh, Bodine Frank, and uh, I hope you like this song that I wrote. Oh, boy. There's a jukebox playing. Some old oh, no, he's doing like a country song. Country song. Singers singing something about being real long gone. Oh my god, there's Hank Azaria. I pull another quarter from the pocket of my jeans. <laughs> Incredible talent. Hollywood Dog's gonna come in and play like electric guitar and make it like a fusion, and they're gonna love it. Excuse me. It's gonna turn out they need each other. Gonna see my like name in the seems light. like a seal. My name in Come light. Shining <laughs> bright in the Hollywood oh, night. Oh, Dwayne, hold the plug. Hey, Hollywood. Now. There's Poochie. <laughs> he 
He's such a cool Hollywood dog. He plays electric guitar. Everyone loves Hollywood dog. song why do they like it now you just added a bass line <laughs> the same song so much about you, Ziggy Peppercorn. I represent Hollywood Dog. I don't know if the dog talked to you about my fee, but it's customary to get the 10% from the owner. This the is the guy that plays Hollywood Dog. I don't know if you're not familiar with voice actors. Okay, I'm clean with Louise, and here's your money back. Ah, oh, thanks. Sure. Uh, unless you're staying, in which case I'll just take back half the rent. Oh, uh, minus two free weeks. Deal. And use of the car. Uh, alternate days. Deal. You know, you're really quite an operator, kid. The way I see it, you're going places. Yeah, well, the way I see it, dog, we're going places. <laughs> oh, I was sniffing around the Beverly Hills Hotel last week. Seems they're looking for a cabana boy. Me, a cabana boy? Are you kidding? That joint is crawling with chicks who would kill for a guy like you. Really? How can I meet him? That's where I come in. I never met a dame who could resist a great-looking guy with a cute dog. <laughs> cute dog? You know where I can find one? You quick, kid. I like that. I'm disappointed in Hollywood dog. London. Handle our salons worldwide. We've worked with enough hair to know that fine hair, like Jackie's, needs something extra. Extra body shampoo and condition. He was on uh, Star Trek Enterprise. If you doused us in LA, we see a lot of dry hair. To keep it bouncy, moisture rich formula. You haven't seen my hair. Hair in salon conditions. Like the Sahara Desert in the summer. Starts with Vidal Sassoon salon shampoos and conditioners. Vidal Sassoon, if you don't look good, we don't look good. Uh-oh. What's wrong? There's just one minute made left. I'll play you for it. <laughs> Yo, great game. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I got thirsty just watching you guys. These are sports people. Made orange. The orange orange. The official soft drink of the NBA. Now the folks at Wendy's have never followed sports. I don't know anyone. A fun way for your whole family to meet. Oh, the Jetsons, Jetsons the movie. Because when you come to Wendy's, we'll give you a free Jetsons the movie cup. Just order the jet pack. That's terrific. It's a delicious old-fashioned quarter-pound single and large drink. Oh, <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! I'm always disappointed that they never ended up doing a live-action Jetsons movie like they did a live-action um, Flintstones. Because I liked the Flintstones movie, but I've always been more of a fan of future stuff instead of the past that would have been nice my daughter when he said yeah no the one where they go back in time is the flint uh the jetsons meet the flintstones which i own on blu-ray these cups are major cool and i own the jetsons movie on dvd i think you know they're pretty nifty too come in for your jetpack and free jetsons the movie cup today collect all four yeah Only recently they actually, Warner Brothers, put out a Hanna-Barbera collection that was ten Hanna-Barbera films based on their different properties, and it had Jetsons Meet the Flintstones, some Yogi Bear movies, a Huckleberry Hound movie, um, Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf, Ghoul School. Yeah, that was pretty good. Saturday, find out what it's like to be a cop in a city that never sleeps. Watch a special one-hour Cops in Las Vegas, followed by Totally Hidden Video. So, that's unfortunate. No more cop dog. <sighs> or not cop dog. Hollywood dog. Now I'm giving them ideas.
Although I guess that's just, uh, that's already a show we watched where the cop became a dog. Whatever that was called. <laughs> Puchinski, thank you, that was what it was. Skeleton Warriors! Why are they skeletons? <laughs> Captain Squid says, oh hey, it's Commander Sterling's favorite show. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie uses clips from this occasionally. The coolest CG skeleton I've ever seen. Tides of existence locked in an eternal struggle for the hearts and minds of the living. Each side. Oh, that voice is familiar. Who's that? One of the one of the people who knows uh, voice actors. Tell me. Names it share. But what of those caught in between? Which way will they turn? <laughs> Tony J. What else was he in? Because I, I feel like I can hear him saying something else that's almost like a meme in my head. What is it? Hunchback makes sense. See Frollo? I will see who I want to see! You're not my father! I know that. But this is how you respect his I feel like I'm remembering him from TMNT somehow. Marie, what's wrong with the Baron? He served- Oh, they have like laser swords. Father for years! Ugh. I don't trust him, Josh. Father didn't either. And now that father's gone- uh, uh, You're in charge, just like you've always wanted. Ugh. Careful! I only have two brothers. I'm not looking to lose one. Then tell Justin to stop playing king! What did you do this time? Me? Yes, you, big brother. You know Yes! That's what I'm thinking of. We've got to have more money. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. And it when you treat him like a child. Then he should stop acting like one. Ever since father, the city is my responsibility now. Joshua just can't handle that. Yes, he can. He just doesn't like it. Joshua is proud. If you push him too hard, he'll end up defying you just to show you he can. Hey, ah, Prince Joshua. Oh, look at that hairdo. Holy My shit. dear friend. Not for long, if Justin has his way. Our relationship has never been a warm one, I'm afraid. I think he senses that I don't respect him. You said something about helping me. You said there was a way. Not to help you, your highness. To help the people. That's right. That's what I want. To help our people. Fuck look the people. there. Of course they need you. Not your father. This guy's not your evil brother, for sure. But you, you have the vision. You have the strength. He looks like Wolverine your and Sabretooth had a older, baby. But that gives him no right for to obvious a throne reasons. that belongs to you. To be king, justice demands it. Tell me what to do. With I think we watched pleasure. the Pog show once. Serafina. Yes, I miss father. You know what the expedition meant to him and to all of us. Jennifer Hale, aka Femme Shep Kiyoshi, is the sister. Oh, great. I just didn't know how hard it would be to be in charge. I can't even get through to my own brother. Maybe try trusting his judgment for a change. I mean, how dangerous could these friends of his be? Are That's a beautiful transition. Ready? More transitions should have CG skulls eating the camera. Yes, my lord. 
But everything in Luminicity depends on the power of the Light Star. If something goes wrong... We need it removed for mere seconds! While it powers your brother's defenses, we cannot touch him! Do you want to leave this kingdom or not? Let's do it! in the light star chamber. Baron! They're just gonna like rip all their skin off. Is that why they become skeletons? It's glorious. Amasaur, thanks for gifting 20 tier 1 subs! Hell yeah. Skeleton Warriors has provided! Thank you so much, Nemesaur. This is wrong. I was wrong. No! Keep back! Ah! You're mine! No! Your polarizer's frequency will disrupt the light star! It'll shatter! Baron Dark! You're His name is Baron Dark and you listen to him? I know that we're maybe generalizing, but if you meet someone named Baron Dark, you can maybe not trust them, at least a little bit. It's fine. Captain Squid with 100 bits says, Shisha! Pocket sand! 69% <laughs> to level 4 on a hype train. Nice. Late, Prince Justin! You traitor! Where's Joshua? Whoever rules the crystal rules luminicity! John. Is it luminicity or is it luminous city? Justin! Jay Fox, thanks for following me. Oh, everything's exploding. That's a shame. If you're gonna have buildings that explode out the top like that, don't design them to look like circumcised dicks. Power the thought. Have been reported throughout Lumi Power surges have been reported throughout Luminicity. There is imminent danger of... Oh, that's a dangerous hi highway. That was... Um, I don't even think that's an accident. I think that just happens every day. Look at that. There's no guardrails. <laughs> just broke right off the edge. You don't need to play F-Zero to know that's a bad idea. Libertarians built this city. He's a skeleton! Look! Skeleton man! Yet I live! I live! <laughs> Some say that he's just an ordinary he's man. Come. But he's not an ordinary man! He's skeleton Joshua, you... man! He's skeleton man! Josh, what's wrong? Grin says these guys need surge suppressors. Everything shouldn't explode from a power loss. You think? Look lively! If you know how, he's back. Ooh, skin man, villain in disguise. Yeah, I told him not to, Baron. I did. But when the power went out and the suns went down, we was freezing right down to our the, the, the bone. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Interesting day, Baron. Indeed, Doctor. The bad news Wow, is he's very blasé that he showed up as a fully ass animated skeleton. Good day, boss. Really? You're not gonna comment on any of this? I have zero organs! I was only able to retrieve half of the minute left on my train. And you're the good news? Yes. I feel free, transformed, invulnerable! Have I lost weight? 
tremendous yep. transformation. Thank you. The splitting crystal only affected you this way? Yes! <laughs> Best Perhaps demon with 400 bits. The Thank you. Of your 30 seconds left on the hype train with uh, 82%. Oh, Stone Crowbell gives us up. 94%. Very close. <laughs> this is no time for games. I have felt the power of half the Light Star Crystal. The other half awaits us. Join me, Dr. Cyborg. Okay, so I understand that, like, he got turned into a skeleton. Where are the other skulls coming from? Did his body have a bunch of extra skeletons? I'm just curious. I feel like we added mass. <laughs> Thank you for the hype train, everyone. And know the dark joy of the Very close, 97% to the next level. No. Pick ass hype train, though. The darkness. Baron. The glorious darkness. <laughs> and a couple of parasitic twins. Ah, faithful dagger. So eager for your master's evil touch. Oh, he can just he is like a he's like he's like Midas. A but with bones. Answer my call to arms. And you, fair shriek, shall add a woman's touch to my invincible arm. Does she have skeleton tits to show she's a woman? No. I need a wide shot on her to see if they gave her skeleton tits. Joined in the darkness. Points up or down? Do you th do you think they're going to give her skeleton boobs? They're absolutely going to give her skeleton boobs. All of creation shall be ours. Ours. She kept her bra. <laughs> How are the other people well, going to get turned into skeletons? From luminosity is sketchy. All communication links are down. You mean Luminicity has no power at all? <laughs> there will oh, be skulls. Yes. I was able to save half of the Light Star Crystal. How are things in the city? There's no power. There are fires everywhere. Justin, we have to do something! I... I don't even know where to begin. Father would know what to do. You wanted to lead us since the day you were born. Why aren't you out there waving your royal ring at everyone? Or does real responsibility terrify you? What's this to get back at me? Well, it worked! I can't fix it! You can watch while I fail our people! We should do people. something! Should we do something? We should do something! Should we do something? I'm changing! <laughs> Jennifer, where are you? Justin! Joshua! What's happening to all of us? I have a feeling. The power of the Light Star Crystal is now within us. You mean I can really fly? And I have the power to terrify small children and stray dogs. <laughs> Basically Ben Grimm's power too, that's fine. I suppose I have earned this face. Seraphina! It's Zomberin time! Wrong? What's the matter? Ah, the castle's under siege. What do you mean? There's no sirens. How did you know that? I, I'm not sure. I just knew it. Like, I know we have to get away now. <laughs> and now, my skeleton warriors to the castle! <laughs> Sure. Why not? Does this city not have like police or is there a national guard? <laughs> Wanna play chicken bat? On DVD. I'll probably pick this up. <laughs> Fun. You'll have to go through me first, Baron. Careful, Justin. I don't think these powers are all they're cracked up to be. <laughs> How 
thoughtful of you to give me the pleasure what is of this? your skeleton warriors. Skeleton warriors. Bittergrin says, so were Baron Dark's vehicles already skeleton themed before he turned into one, or did they spend the afternoon rebuilding them before attacking? I assumed that his skeleton touch powers can be used to thematically change objects as well. That was my assumption, that he could, like, touch a castle and turn it into, like, Castle Skull, Or, like, touch the bikes and turn them into skeleton bikes. Annihilation! Stop right there, Baron. Trade it's me. Zomboy! Ha! You speak to me of betrayal, second son. Look what your misplaced pride has cost you. So desperate to rule, and now all that remains is a ruin of your own making. Your heart is like mine. Come with me, and you will rule with me. No, Josh, don't! <laughs> my power you can no longer corrupt me but i can destroy you no. released on dvd i bet that's hard to find that came out over a decade ago that's probably been out of print for a long time oh. Let me look. why why are we in the sky cycle here yeah. i don't remember coming here Neither do Looks I. like you can only get skeleton warriors used on eBay, and it's like fifty-five dollars. Oh my god! On Amazon, it's one hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Yeah, that's been out of print for a while. <laughs> I was thinking of getting us to safety. I grabbed you, turned, and walked through the shadows. Then why don't we remember? No, no time offense, to but if anyone. Buy skeleton warriors for a hundred and eighty nine dollars. You need better priorities. No, no, let's get out of here. And I believe me, I've spent some money on Blu rays in my day, but holy shit, not worth it. But where can we go? A one hope. Ah, my brother had always relied too heavily on that crystal. The whole country has for centuries. We'd be better off if we'd never bothered to get it back. Get it back from home, Uncle Yeah, that's Ursa. the whole show. We've always had the light. thirteen episodes. Star Crystal. <laughs> Shows they don't teach enough in school these days. Long ago, forces of darkness held it, and our people had a nasty time getting it back. There's a legend that a portion of the stone was chipped, and the energy that was unleashed affected the warrior nearest it in a manner none had ever seen before. Like us, Uncle? In a way. Here. It looked like they were shooting at walls. Those royal brats the skeletons of ADHD. <laughs> They're just bored. Take it. And to think I had them in my grasp. Do not torture yourself, Baron. You shall find them soon enough. Then the entire crystal will be ours. Fool! They could be anywhere. Well, but what of the youngest child? If you had achieved a certain rapport. Yes. He shall be our beacon. The good guys have skeleton-themed armor, too, so this is just a skeleton-themed country. Are we the baddies? <laughs> Joshua, are you all right? No. No. He knows. Joshua, what's Who wrong? knows? Baron Dark. I cannot hide from him. He's coming for me here. Now. Out of the blue... Hold on, let me pull that up, Christopher B. Do 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 do. These happy days are yours and my happy days. Saved. Thank you for the recommendation. Now, where did Skeleton Warriors go?
We must not underestimate the king's brother. Ursac may be eccentric, but he's no fool. There, Serafina. What power of sight I have now. Looks like I'll need all the help I can get. I think it's a mistake that everyone is bone themed. The villains could have been bone themed, or the heroes could have been bone themed. But I feel like you need to broaden this a little bit. I don't know. Just feels a little samey. It's there. Emergency shield generator interface there. They'll be here unless. Didn't you know we all have a skeleton inside us? Don't lie. Skeletons are a myth, like Bigfoot or ice. Less than a minute. Josh, Jen, grab me some polarizers out of that cabinet. Load lock and put them out by the ports while Justin helps me adjust the energy shields. Captain Squid says, but everyone likes to bone. Battle stations! You happy with that? You typed that? You paid me a dollar to read it? You happy with that? <laughs> no! The power shall be mine! That's it, young prince. Let the shadow darkness wash over your heart. Battery 5, take the gun only. What? Is the season finale the heroes and villains teaming up to fight osteoporosis? One can only hope. Yes, you can, Josh. They should use the osteoporosis dance, if anyone's familiar. But he feeds on doubt. You must believe in yourself to overcome his influence. Unidentified airborne craft overhead. Rise and lock! The girl! Like, I feel like wearing a skull on your skull is kind of a hat on a hat. This feels redundant. I don't know, I'm being nitpicky. Ah, blast! Hit the main generator line! We lost the shields! They're coming in! Someone with only two arms. <sighs> Not fair at all. <laughs> Not even a good guess. Bug out. We've got to get out of here. Then when did he get phasing powers? Did I miss that? Or is that new? Dance, pretty boy. Yeah, I missed the skeleton boobs. Oh, he's got the skeleton boobs! No! Uncle Ursa, I mean, if I got turned into a skeleton, I'd also wear a bra. <laughs> Too powerful. We need to find a way out. I feel like I would have skeleton dysphoria. Because I would be lacking certain secondary sexual characteristics. <laughs> I'm afraid you're right. I guess it's time to blow the roof off this place. But how? Leave that to me! Get your sister. Now! 15 seconds to self-destruct. Are you sure this is wise? The Light Star! We must find it, quickly! Jen, hurry! Damn! Five seconds to self-destruct. Or... With 
they go! Where are they? It's nice that the villains just literally can't die. That's convenient for the story to keep going. Every episode you can explode them and then run away while they put themselves back together. Oh, this is amazing. <gasps> what a basement. The house was just for show. This, my underground battle station, is what I've spent my life creating. Impressive. We must do everything in our power to protect your half of the Lightstar Crystal, even if it means our lives. And we must recover the Baron Dark's half soon. While he possesses it, he wields a terrible weapon. But how, Uncle? How do we stop creatures who... who can't be hurt? By using the powers the Lightstar Crystal has bestowed upon you. By becoming the Warriors of the Light. It is your destiny. But there's only the three of us against... Four of us, nephew. From this day forth, you are all more than you were before. Justin, with the fire of... God damn, I just noticed the piercing nipple plate armor. <laughs> Look at that, oh my god. Is it cold in here? Jesus Christ. Is that practical? I feel like if you're like swinging a sword around, you don't want to accidentally stab your hand on your own spike nipples. The crystal in your blood, you are now Prince Lightstar, Jennifer. Because the crystal has given you the ability to fly, your new name shall be Talon. Talon? I like it. What do you think, Serafina? And me? What of me? You. Joshua, the crystal has selected you to bear the pain of your actions. Because you move within the shadows of darkness, you shall be called Grimskull. <laughs> Everyone else got cool names, asshole. Grimskull. Yes, it is a name that suits me. And you, Uncle, shall be named Guardian. Your wisdom watches over us. We have so much to learn. Immediately dies. Stone Corbell says, This is, like, really weirdly violent if you really think about it. The villains can skeletonize people with a touch. The villains get dismembered over and over. Oh, yeah, that's why it's fucking awesome. And so little time. I would have loved this as a kid. I mean, I like it now as an adult. I would have loved it as a kid, though. How gratuitously stupid. It's perfect. I can sense Prince Joshua's presence, but it is weak. They have defeated us this day. I underestimated the power of their half of the crystal. A mistake I shall not make again. Lightstar, here! I'm assuming he made that mistake the rest of the 12 episodes. <laughs> me, I will spare no flames! Can we go get him? Nah, let's wait till next week. Lightstar, Grimskull, Talon, Guardian, Defenders of the Light, Keepers of the Crystal, standing strong against Baron Dark's apocalyptic ambition. They are the last hope for a world in chaos. They seek to heal that which has been broken. They fight to restore order to a world out of balance. But can they? Fuck yeah, that song slaps too. Well, that was pretty cool. Wishing well? I... I wish... I wish that I could sing and dance. If you try hard on what you do, all your wishes can come true. Sing and dance, sing and dance. Sing and dance, sing and dance. I can. I can! Dance magic, dance magic, dance magic, dance. Do I love to dance? Do I love to dance? 
Oh no, it's a furry wishing well. Give me the chance to move my feet to a wonderful bouncy beat. I feel the magic of dancing. I live the magic of dancing. Yes, I Yeah, there's the we've got to have more money line. Or can you taking this personally? Good. Yes. I need more enemies. Crop. No more money. We've got to have money. We've got to have money. We will return on the theme of bones after I use the bathroom. Be right back. Dance, magic, dance, dance, magic, dance, magic, dance, magic, dance. Uh, pilots one season wonders you've observed which did you most unironically want to see go somewhere sure um so there's an Irwin allen show from the 60s that ran for one season called the time tunnel it's pretty good um if you like Irwin allen or time travel shows i'd recommend it highly um they in the early 2000s did a reboot pilot for the time tunnel that was really good, and we watched it on this show, and it made me sad that uh, it didn't actually get picked up, but what are you going to do? <sighs> a thousand years when archaeologists dig you up, they'll look at your bones and hum this song to themselves. <laughs> I think that has as likely of a chance as the other thing that people say. <laughs> that one I never got as an insult. For those who don't know, that's a pretty common, like, transphobic insult, is they'll be like, archaeologists will dig up your bones in a thousand years, and they'll say you're a man, and it's like, first of all, I'll be fucking dead. You can call me slurs when I'm dead, and I won't care. <laughs> I'll be fucking dead. <laughs> Second of all, that's not how archaeology works. They would look at the other things around me, what I was buried with. They could also fucking probably tell I was on hormones. I don't know what that does to my bones, but probably something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's one of the weirder transphobic arguments, and it's pretty fun. I'm, I have that Pride of the X-Men pilot saved. I'm so scared to watch it, because Disney owns it. Disney owns the X-Men. 
So that's pretty, you know, don't fuck with Disney, even though it's already on YouTube. Probably don't care. Still not worth fucking with. That's true, my skeleton will have boobs, as all fantasy, including Skeleton Warriors, has taught me. Love my bones, but they do give a rigid structure to my body, so that's pretty good. Okay, let's see if any of you... <laughs> like I said at the beginning of the stream, a while back, we did... Um... <laughs> a while back, we did that dummy show... And this show has one of the same performers. I'll keep it a surprise as to who. Hey, Bill's sunbathing up on his roof. That is so unsafe. <laughs> most remember him as one of the actors from Trick or Treat, which is a pretty good Halloween anthology. <laughs> Halloween Town, why do you have to step on my punchlines? Of all the days to stop wearing a clip-on. <laughs> oh my god, Petey. What have you been picking that bleeds? Relax, Mom. It's not blood. It's just paint. Well... That's blood. Oh. Paint? Gavin Thompson's birthday party. Toriador says, why did the skeleton buy the broken down house to flip? The inspector said it had good bones. It was at Birthdays Incorporated. The place oh yeah, the dad is in the happiness movie too, isn't he? I like that movie. They should put that out on Blu-ray. I get why they haven't, but they should. It is a good movie. If fucked. This is amazing. Look at that Paintball, go-karts, laser tag, food fight buffet? All you can fling! <laughs> can I have my birthday party there next week? Oh. Birthdays Incorporated is expensive, and we don't have grocery store manager money like the Thompsons. <laughs> but having a party at home is for babies. I want mine to be cool. And maybe you shouldn't go. <laughs> of course you should go. We'll make sure your party is the talk of the seventh grade. That's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> it's a wizard's yeah, Waverly they're place. still talking about mine. There was no way for me to know that pinata was filled with killer bees. Hey, killer bees would be great. I just don't want any musical chairs or pin the tail on the dog. Fair enough, I'm H. Dark Beast. Monkey. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I'll probably give it a try on a stream I'm not on YouTube, and I am today. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do, Bob? Uh, maybe we could gangsta it up a little. <laughs> oh, no. Put some sunglasses on him and call it Pin the Tail on the Donkey. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Bob. She's being sarcastic. <laughs> Yeah, the well, daughter's no, maybe we stuff, too. I also recognize her, but older? We should call Birthdays Incorporated. You know, leave it to the professionals. No, we can do this ourselves. We'll throw Petey a party that'll make Birthdays Inc. look like Birthdays Stink. <laughs> <laughs> that joke's so bad, I'm surprised I didn't make it. Uh, don't do that joke at the party, Bob. <laughs> Cake before pizza? It feels so wrong, but it tastes so right. <laughs> yeah, this party makes birthdays ink look like birthdays stink. <laughs> that one got me. Again, every bad show has at least one joke that makes me laugh. If I had known Petey was gonna have a good time, I wouldn't have volunteered to help. <laughs> Who's up for laser tag? Laser tag, yeah! yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hold on, let's review the rules. Yeah, I'm probably remembering her from Mean Girls if that's what she was in. Aww. No lasers in the eyes, no lasering the grown-ups, but most important, kill the heck out of each other! Yeah! <laughs> What's with the flashlights? Flashlights? I don't see any flashlights. These are laser guns. So flashlight tag is a thing. <laughs> I've not seen freaks and 
Oh, good lord. I knew he wouldn't let me down. Dad? Uh, not into sci-fi, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, who wants to go outside and play with dirt bikes? Yeah! yeah! The board game! You just walked into the lamest party ever. Not anymore. A bootleg copy of the next Spider-Man movie. This doesn't come out for six months. Yeah. What? <laughs> what do you mean you got Spider-Man 2 six months early? That doesn't even make fucking sense. What? How? It's your dad, Sam Raimi? How? What? Have you seen a, a work print copy? It's not fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> What's this show called? The Pits. The P I T T S. How did you get that, Tony? Well, let's just say my pop stole it from a film processing plant he was setting on fire to commit insurance fraud. <laughs> and it was on VHS for some reason. Okay. With a cover. Hmm. <laughs> huh. Help, Spider Man! My bra is about to fall! Yep, it's a porn. You called it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Her bra was about to fall off. <laughs> yeah, Mom, I changed my mind. I will go with you to put the dog to sleep. That's a second joke. The kids are getting the jokes that make me laugh at this one. I don't care if you've been drinking. Get over here as fast as you can. Oh, relatable. <laughs> we blew it, Bob. As much as I love seeing Petey suffer, and I do love seeing Petey suffer, even I feel bad for him. You've got to do something. Well, you used to be a 12 year old boy, Bob. What did you like? Mm, Slideshows, lollipops, letters from Grandma. <laughs> Didn't you do even one thing your friends thought was cool? I'll be right back. I bet Dad's head was pushed in every toilet in Statesville High. Hello, Morty. Hello, Bobby. It is literally the same exact animatronic dummy from the other show. They just put different hair on it. It's the same exact dummy. This dummy has been in more failed pilots than Scott Bakula. And that's saying something. <laughs> this cursed puppet just bounces from one failed television series to another. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Long time no see, Bobby. <laughs> Actually, it's just Bob now. Well, la -dee -da. <laughs> Tell me. This is episode four of this series, by the way. The show is not about a dummy. I'm pretty sure this show, the premise is just like weird shit happens to them every episode, which actually sounds like a fun premise for a sitcom. I liked Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV series, for that reason. The difference was that was actually kind of funny. This has fallen pretty flat for the most part. Tell me, Bob. Where the hell have you been the last 30 years? <laughs> Upstairs and uh, going to school. Even props work. fail upwards. Hmm. King, raising a family, but mainly upstairs. We were inseparable, Bobby. Then one day you get interested in it's nepotism. His cousin's Chucky. Model rockets. <laughs> and I'm living in a box talking to myself with my own hand up my ass. Why would you do that? I like it, okay? <laughs> Look, 
we can catch up later. My son's birthday party is a bust, and I need your help. Oh, well, well, well. What's in it for me? What would you like? Farrah Fawcett between my sheets. Farrah Fawcett is almost 60. What? Whoa, that's one faucet I don't want to turn on. Okay, how about I live upstairs with you? Move in with my family? That's crazy. Well, I'm afraid this conversation is over. Uh, okay, you win, but for one week only. Deal? Did the puppet make a pegging joke? The puppet made a fingering himself joke. Shoot! Pretty close. I'm... Say, Morty, I hear you had to go to the doctor's last week. No, I didn't. Uh, you didn't? No. So why don't you shut up and let me do the talking? <laughs> Morty, we don't say shut up in this house. Let's go to my house. We say it there all the time. <laughs> hey, Bob, guess what I had for... Is that the Crypt Keeper's voice? That's a good question. Let me look up the IMDb for this episode, and I'll let you know. So this is from 2003. Dan Castellan? <laughs> Dan Castellan, that is the voice of the dummy. Because of course he is. Who was also the voice of Hollywood Dog. Wasn't he? Right? Okay. Great. Or it was one of the other people from The Simpsons. Either way. Jesus Christ. Was he the Crypt Keeper? I don't know who voiced the Crypt Keeper off the top of my head, but I don't think it was him. Who does do the Crypt Keeper voice? John Kassir. Nope, not the same guy. Oops. Wrong thing. Where'd that stupid dummy go? This party. Such dinner last night. Uh, I don't know, Morty. What did you have for dinner last night? Uh. <laughs> and a side of. <laughs> Oh, right. The dummy farted. <laughs> the perfect material for 12-year-old boys. So, like, yeah. Bye, Petey. Good party, Petey. Yeah, good party, Petey. <laughs> Dad, you were amazing. Oh, I really can't take the credit. Morty did all the work. Morty? Well, I stink at ventriloquism. Luckily, Morty's one of those magical dummies that has his own personality. <laughs> you know, like in those old movies and TV shows. It's not that hard of a concept to grasp. What's wrong with you people? Unbelievable. Has this family ever owned one thing that doesn't talk? Oh, but well, it was that parrot. <laughs> so, in return for helping us, uh, I've made a little deal with Morty. I'm moving in. What? <laughs> for one week only. He, I'm he... trying to figure out the premise of this show, because I know the dummy is only in this episode. And I'm trying to figure... Okay, hold on. Let me... Because now I'm just thinking it would be kind of a funny plot to a TV show if every episode the family got introduced to another bad TV show trope and they have to deal with it. But, like, I don't know how long you could do that show for. Let's see, in another it's episode... Through this thing. Uh, did you... <laughs> like a different... What happens in this episode? It's called A Bug's Life. Can't tell. What about this one? Has werewolves in it. Just don't look. We needed. <laughs> just. I don't know. I just think that's kind of a funny concept. Every episode they have to do a stupid sitcom trope. You know what I mean? But they're aware of it and hate it. You won't be any trouble. He doesn't eat. You don't eat, do you? I nibble. <laughs> he nibbles. You're right. It probably is a Herbie car. 
What do you say? Like my mother, the car. Again, you could just pick out weird sitcoms and directly parody them. Liz? Oh, I don't know. It's not any different than you letting that French exchange student live here. Except I take a bath every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm French. You're telling me, P.U. <laughs> He only zings people he likes. Yeah, I kid out of love and all that crap. <laughs> well, it was kind of funny. <laughs> and my people do stink. <laughs> oh, Mom, look at him. I mean, doesn't the word creepy cross your mind even for a second? Oh. <laughs> Come on, Liz. He did save Petey's party. Well, I guess I don't see what harm could come from it. Yeah. <laughs> A ventriloquist dummy is moving in. Thank God I was running out of things to talk about with the school psychologist. <laughs> uh, teenagers, <laughs> am I right? Uh, we've not watched Small Wonder. Small Wonder ran long enough that it's probably not something we could watch on stream. Like, if it's had a DVD release, there's a decent chance that it's a no-go. Not always. Skeleton Warriors is fine, but... Hmm, <laughs> what the heck is this gizmo, Bob? It's called a computer. Ooh, what computer do, Kimosabi? <laughs> For most people, it's a gateway to a world of filth. <laughs> But I use it to do the Pitt family finances. Mm, figures. All I have to do is enter my secret password, Bob Pitt. And voila! I have complete access to our credit cards, mortgage, bank accounts. Bank accounts, eh? Yep. And our store, uh -huh. kids' college funds, uh -huh. Christmas club. Yes, go on. <laughs> What was that password again? Bob Pitt. Bob Pitt. Is this filth? Absolutely. Is that with two T's? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it nice of Morty to send us out of the house for this day of beauty? Am I the only one wondering where a dummy gets money for a gift certificate? Teenagers, am I right? <laughs> It's too bad Morty couldn't come with us. Small wonder he didn't even know a dummy could... print. Yeah, probably not. Get diarrhea. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm, let's see. Another joke that actually makes me laugh. Simple. Well, yeah. Just have that book there. Okay, that's a joke you didn't have to try too hard for, but. Uh... <laughs> this show is like a smelly armpit. How dare you disrespect armpits like that. ka -ching! What a day. Boy, I feel beautiful. <laughs> I've been waxed and plucked in places my doctor hasn't seen. Ah, my key isn't working. Marty! Mom, we're begging you to get a pap smear, please. <laughs> Open up! <laughs> <laughs> that's a copyrighted song that's gonna be an issue. <laughs> Brother Dummy doing, doing dumb stuff. Not anymore. What are you talking about, Morty? This is our house. Not anymore. I also own your store, bank accounts, and your car. So don't use it or I'll report it stolen and I'll tell the cops that you touch my private wooded area. Please don't kick us out, Morty. I don't want to be homeless. Uh, I'm such a sucker for kids. Hang on. I was very unhappy in there for 30 years. I hope you will be too. Bye. Yeah, I guess you're right. The Chucky movies did do the voodoo for dummies bit first. I'll get our home back. I happen to know a secret window that's never locked. Have I ever showed you my, uh... I don't know if I ever showed you this Chucky Blu-ray collection. 
It's not one of the best Arrow sets I've ever been put out. It's a little misaligned, actually, which is annoying, but it does have the movies, so that's good. I don't like the art on the front very much. I get it. I know it. It's it's all the it's all the characters. I know. Yeah. Just kind of wish it was just Chucky. And then it's all in cardboard, which is a little weird. But what are you gonna do? The basement? Maybe. <laughs> Can I help oh, you? Wow. He's pointing a loaded shotgun at his face. That's nice. Sorry. Wrong house. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Pitt. I checked your accounts twice. And you elect... It's the guy who was playing the voice of the dummy. Electronically signed all your assets over to a third party. But weren't you even the slightest bit suspicious of the name Mortimer J. Knucklehead? <laughs> the universal chucky blu-ray set with the hard case yeah i used to have that one before i replaced it with this one because this one has four k's except for the first movie which is just on blu-ray and i have a separate 4k of that from shout factory dead but it's a nice box so huh. this is crazy in order to get into our finances he would have to know how to operate a computer and have our secret password how could a dummy do all that? Uh-oh. <laughs> you gave him all our financial information? I didn't give it to him. He outwitted me. <laughs> Mr. Pitt, you've been a loyal customer for 12 years, and now that you're broke, I think I know just the person to help you out. <laughs> help these bums out. <laughs> That's a pretty good joke, too. This show started rough. But I think I'm warming to it. I think if this show had continued, I I don't know. It only ran for seven seasons. I think they could have grown into this. Just a weird, magical realism universe where weird shit happens. You could work with that. And make sure that is, that is him. He's voicing the dummy. Sure they don't enjoy the Teller's Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> Too late! We already enjoyed them! <laughs> We have no money, no place to live. Who should we call? Do you really want anyone to know that we were outsmarted by a block of wood? <laughs> Probably not, but we still need shelter for at least tonight. I know the perfect place. Follow me. Ooh. Hey. hey. <laughs> Stop that. Get out. Where are you taking us, Petey? Just a few more feet. Are they in Saddam Hussein's what hidey is hole? What's this place? An abandoned beaver dam. Me and my friends come here all the time. And do what? Pretend to be beavers, stupid. <laughs> what happened to the beavers? They moved on. They're quite nomadic. <laughs> well, we're only here for one night, so we might as well make the best of it. Damn straight, Mom. Me? <laughs> What? That's where we are. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna... I agree. Grinding your teeth. I think they should have been a little more self-aware. Sorry, mommy. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. We have company. <laughs> heck is that? It's a beaver, stupid. <laughs> then what have I been pretending to be? <laughs> like, what that's a funny joke. Home, like, what the Too fuck bad. is that? I don't know. You're here first. Yeah. What have I been pretending to be? I don't know. That's a funny joke to me. I am not losing two homes in one day. <laughs> He didn't get one punch in. Well, maybe if your father had uncrossed his arms. It wouldn't have mattered. He wanted it more. Where did we 
we go now? I know a cave where the bobcats are hardly ever home. We no. <laughs> that angry beaver was right to take back his home. And that's just what the pits are going to do. Who's with me? Morty, Morty, I'm kicking them all right out. Oh, it's the pits. Okay. No matter how ugly it gets in there, always remember, you're fighting for our home. <laughs> okay, the fact that they are weaponizing the beaver. Funny. I think I'm a fan of this show now. We'll have to watch the rest of this show at some point. <laughs> Godspeed, my bucktooth friend. I still don't know how you got that beaver to come home with us. Animals are no different than people, right, Faith? Mm-hmm. If you sneak up and roll them in a coat, they'll pretty much do anything you want. Darn right. <laughs> Afraid to cut you. <laughs> ah, my good lamb. At least he appreciates our things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, little fella. Uh, I got no beef with you. Easy. Bring the beaver puppet. much tail since oh, why am I yucking when I should be ducking? <laughs> oh, run, Morty, run! Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Where are we going? Oh, easy on the pants, the rent it! That's the way I want to go. <laughs> Good night, Good to have our house back again. Yeah. It's too bad we had to legally change our name to the Knuckleheads. <laughs> Katie Knucklehead. Like to see the kids at school try and make fun of that. <laughs> I don't know what Morty was made of, but he sure burns nice. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Getting rid of anything with a mouth. <laughs> You're next, Petey. Petey, did you return that beaver to the wild like we asked you to? Return the what to the where now? Uh oh. That turned out better than I thought. French people stink or what? Again, okay. All right. I don't know. I feel like they needed to push it a little edgier, and I don't mean like, oh, do sex jokes. I just mean, I don't know, a little more like self aware. It clearly the writers will, were self aware. I don't know how self aware everyone else was on what they were doing. But I don't know. I think with some tweaks, this could have been really good. Um, I don't know. That was interesting. We'll watch some more episodes of that in the future on other VHS streams. Because all of them are on YouTube. So. <sighs> when the storm of is dying, dear Louise, and the moon Thank you, Mr. Kirkby. We'll let you know. These days, it's nothing more than a valuable antique, but when this phonograph first hit the market in 1904, it and the phonographs that preceded it were part of a minor miracle. These things, with their wax cylinder recordings, altered forever the way human beings enjoy themselves. For the first time, music was available at will in the house to those not rich enough to support a private orchestra.
This is from the Australian Broadcasting Corporation. The first recording ever made was of these words. From 1982. Mary had a little lamb, its feet were quite a slow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. That was in 1887. The speaker was Thomas Edison himself. Florence Nightingale describing the Battle of Balaclava followed, so did many other recordings of music and poetry. Tennyson reading selections from Maud was very popular around 1890. But cylinders were eventually replaced by flat recordings. This is the Edison Diamond Disc of 1889. Bakelite and shellac, fragile, heavy and very, very thick. I was going to say, that's the thickest record I've ever seen. I didn't even know they made records that thick. I know about cylinder records. I did not know that the original, like, disc records were that fucking thick, though. As 78s progressed, they uh, lost a bit of weight. As the records changed, so, of course, did the players. This is the ram's horn player, obvious where it got its name. The sound is taken mechanically down here and then travels acoustically up the tube and out of the horn. No amplifiers or electronics there. Sometimes these ones came with bamboo needles that had to be sharpened after every single record. By the 1920s, this was the height of elegance. It had metal needles, literally needles, very sharp indeed, and a very heavy head. It also had to be wound mechanically. Electricity, of course, was the power source by the 50s when the gramophone and the radio shared a cabinet making the radiogram. The microgroove, long-playing record now began to dominate the market, and with minor improvement, it's been with us ever since. But isn't there something better? Can you imagine anything better than a record player? I can't. And what you've just been listening to is the ultimate in recorded sound. It will make all conventional disc and cassette systems obsolete. It's dustproof, scratchproof, digitally recorded. Um, I'm not sure, Chromatic Cuttlefish. It doesn't say, I don't think, the name of the program. Oh, no, it is. Towards 2000. You're absolutely fucking right. Recorded. Thank you. Read by a laser, and it's called the compact disc. And that's it. The biggest revolution in the recording industry since the invention of the long-playing gramophone record, but this is no ordinary disc. Just 12 centimetres in diameter, the music is recorded onto it digitally, and there's no needle being dragged through a groove. That information is being read by a laser light. A laser? And like we're in Star Wars! And this is the tiny laser that does all the work. How about this? I have an idea, and we'll store videos on it, and we'll shoot the discs with a blue laser and that'll be the film format of the future work a small low power semiconductor which emits invisible infrared light and plays the record from inside out magnified 12,000 times this is what the surface of the compact disc looks like you can see the thousands of tiny pits and grooves which the laser has cut into a thin plastic sheet like a blue ray, so to speak? Yeah, we'll have to workshop the name. When it's monitored or read off by another laser in the playback machine, the lengths of the grooves and the distances between them give varying light patterns, which are then picked up by a tiny diode. And unlike a conventional gramophone disc, this is totally proof against fingerprints and dust because the information is stored underneath a plastic film. It doesn't really matter how much I manhandle that particular disc, it will still continue to give very good audio quality. Be back in one sec, I gotta grab something.
worry about what I grabbed. I'll show you in a little bit. Whew. This is a one-sided disc. On the other side is simply the label of the record. And the record player which plays it is also surprisingly small and compact. That information is read by a laser from the underside. You simply place the disc in there like a conventional record player and off you go. Introducing new technology in a popular market has its own problems. Take the battle between cartridges and cassettes. It confused the consumer mightily and it took around a decade for cassettes to establish a clear lead. The big manufacturers have learnt from that experience. With the laser audio disc, two of the biggest, Philips and Sony, have united to produce compatible hardware. Half a world away from Holland in Tokyo, Ian Finlay found that although their players look different, the discs are exactly the same. I like the front-loading CD players. I like the front-loading record players, too. I had one that was like a held the record vertically. I don't think that's good for it, but it looked cool. Just put it into pause for a moment. The, uh, oh, I the know, Granite Cuttlefish. I don't watch this stuff to laugh at it. Like, that's silly. There are moments like that, but, like, I'm fully aware that we're looking at hindsight. That's part of the fun is recognizing how far we've come and the things that we look at today with this much excitement, recognizing that in just a few decades it'll be as blasé as this stuff is to us, or as uh, banal, rather. Is that it's very difficult to try and get across the sound to you now, like this, when you're listening on conventional uh, TV set, and uh, also we're recording on a conventional tape recorder, so we can't actually get across to you in, a, in sound terms uh, what this thing can do, but basically it revolves around five things. The background noise. The background, there's practically no, no background noise at all. No hiss or anything like that. There's no wow or flutter. Uh, distortion is only... Just wait a little bit. Hipsters will be begging for the crackles and pops. 0.05%, <laughs> which is uh, very, very good, as any hi-fi buff will know. Frequency response is um, roughly similar to existing hi-fi sets between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Uh, the main thing to say... Sound burger. Portable Bluetooth turntable. Holy shit. That's impractical, but pretty cool. <laughs> That's neat. Say about the frequency response, though, is that it's absolutely flat. No pits or heights in it at all. And uh, finally, the most important thing is the dynamic range is remarkable, 90 dB, which uh, uh, hi-fi buffs will, will uh, agree is very, uh, is, is very remarkable. The player itself is a huge advance over conventional record players because it gives you the same sort of control you have on a tape recorder. Fast forward and fast reverse scanning, pause and stop buttons, and the ability to instantly select any track you want. It's also got a little programmable memory. That's the thing that annoys me the most about record players, although I do like records. Um, my record player broke, so I haven't gotten to use one in years now. Um, but I do kind of like that noise sometimes. It's kind of comforting. It has a warm sound. It's not clear, but it is fun. So that instead of... See you, Propane Priestess. Have fun at D&D. Playing the tracks in their right order, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, you can select your own sequence in advance so that they play in any order you want. Although I will say, when you are doing that on a record player and you're trying to get to a specific song and you kind of eyeball it and you happen to drop the needle exactly correctly, that's pretty satisfying. And all the while, the monitor tells you which track you're on and how many minutes and seconds it's been playing. In addition, the whole thing, all of that, a uh, little computerized marvel is packed into something which you can pick up and move around like that, even shake, and nothing happens. A disc quite... man would blow his fucking mind. Quite incredible, and uh, means that it's got enormous potential uh, eventually, once in the future, it's perhaps made a little bit more compact uh, for the uh, car audio industry as well. 
The players are due for release at the end of 82 in Japan and the United States, in Australia and Europe, sometime in 83. They'll cost between six and eight hundred dollars, and the discs should be no more expensive than records now. In a way, it all sounds too good to be true. Other systems have, heaven knows, failed to live up to their pre-release promises to change the way we listen. Quadraphonic sound, for instance, died of starvation when not enough quad records were released. But with compact discs, we're assured there will be a rolling river of material. I don't know. I don't think these things are going to take off. Seven major record companies have already signed up. Oh to... my god! I'm going to have an aneurysm looking at that. Why did you touch it like that? And then for the fucking insert shot, no one said, hey, wipe that off? You nasty, greasy, grease person. What are you doing? I'll pick any random disc. You want to do this, bitch? I'll pick a random disc. This is not how your discs should look, you fuck. Your discs should look like this. They should look pristine, no matter how long you've had them. You disgusting... You fucker. <laughs> I will, I will. I'm distraught. <laughs> Produce on the system. With hardware and software both lined up, compact discs Never may- Never touch the surface of a disc. Always touch it by the edges. Or if you need to, finger in the center. Well rule the roost. At least until someone perfects a method of putting Beethoven's ninth on a silicon chip. Don't laugh. I'm assured that that day, in fact, is not too far off. Hmm. The battle to sell home video recorders is now stronger than ever. These are the new models. Many of them won't be on sale until this spring. And they will offer playing times of up to, in the case of this machine, eight hours on one cassette of tape. So, in theory, you can record not only <laughs> exactly tomorrow... Exactly, Baha, you get it. ...as well, but most of the rest of the evening's viewing as well. Also, on many of the machines, you'll be able to program the recorder to switch itself on and off to tape your favorite programs over the two weeks you're on holiday. And indeed, that's chiefly what these machines are now being used for, time-shifting devices. The market is being expanded, hence the development of the portable VCR machine and the electronic home movie camera. Because sales of ready-made programs on tape for machines like this have been disappointing. First of all, they're expensive to produce, and what's more, the publisher has got to come up with his product on many different sizes of tape. The market is now so confused, at the last count, there were at least seven different incompatible tape. Yeah, you could do long play on certain players, or e even later they had, like, super long play on some tapes and players. Um, you did need special tapes for this, but you could do lower quality recording for more record time tape standards available in this country. Indeed, the home video business is now in an uneasy stalemate. But on top of all this comes round two of the fight, and once again... It turns out okay. Trust me. <laughs> all the industry giants are hoping that their plans and ideas will become accepted as a world standard. Over here is what the battle is all about this time. This machine is capable of playing a video disc. Ooh! A video disc, you say? This is the first of the genre. That one's all fingerprinty too, motherfuckers! <sighs> it's time to crack open one of my laser discs. Where's the thing on this? It's in a protective thing. Give. There we go. <sighs> this is my copy of Honey, I Blew Up the Kid on Laserdisc. Which, by the way, these they're, they're, they have, like, nice art. Like, a record. It's like a big, big, nice thing. There it is! From Walt Disney Home Video. 
Honey, I Blew Up the Kid on Laserdisc. This is extended play, so this is a two-sided one. There wasn't enough data storage on these to play it all on one side. So literally, you would put the disc in, it would play, and then halfway through the movie, or whenever the movie got to the time, you'd have to pull it out, flip it, and put it back in. Some early DVDs did this too, but it was uh, less common. It does not have disc rot. Um, and also, this is not a digital medium. Um, you'd think it is, but it is analog, believe it or not. So yes, it's very interesting. It's the little logo on it, you can see. Well, Disney Home Video, there's the rating and everything. So, did that come out before or after Shrunk the Kids? This is the sequel to Shrunk the Kids. The third one was Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. Then they also did a TV show starring Peter Scolari as Wayne Selinsky. Ah! Hold on, I gotta. I'm. I, I know I'm doing a show, but like this is actually very important to me, so I'm trying to be very careful with this. So sorry. No, I like the show. Yeah, there's a local used media place near me that sells uh, laser discs. Got this per these pretty cheap. I don't have a player as of right now. Someday I'd like to get one. But, uh, yeah, so there's that. There's plans to do a legacy sequel called Shrunk. I heard that. I thought it got cancelled. Back in its protective case. The other ones I have at the moment are Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, and Philadelphia. So. That's my laser disc collection. Made by Philips. Six years ago, we introduced it when it was in an early development stage. This is a record which produces sound and pictures. The underside of the record is a mirror. Through a little hole on the playing unit, a laser beam produces a beam of light which is picked up by the playing surface of the record on the underneath and reflected back into the unit itself. As the disc rotates, a mirror reflects the light in the way that depends on how the signal was recorded there in the first place. And this varying pattern of light is turned into an electrical signal which will eventually produce sound and pictures. Well, each side of the disc runs for about half an hour. One thing I can't do with a system like this is record the program myself. But then the mass-produced discs will cost around a couple of pounds to produce, although if they carry a more expensive feature film, then you would, of course, have to pay more to buy them. And that is perhaps the most interesting thing. What will these video discs carry? Because no matter how ingenious this technology is, no one is going to buy it unless it offers something we want to watch over and over again. What's more, Philips are not alone in the race. American RCA have produced their version of the same device to be launched in the States at the end of this. That's actually, well, not quite. It is a disc player, but that is not a laser disc player. This is something else. I forget what the name of it is. I always forget this format's name. Mr. Blast will know, I'm sure, off the top of his head. But they came in discs that were in cartridges, and you couldn't get the disc out of the cartridge without breaking it. So it's kind of a whole fucked up thing. And Japanese companies are also developing discs of their own. CEDs, that's what they're called. Thank you. Yeah, they're C those were called CEDs. The prospect, in short, is just like the video cassettes: a number of different and incompatible disc systems fighting for the market. Hmm. That's interesting. All right, we've been going for three hours. We're probably done. Cloud Wizard says, "Reminds me of this guy." And as time passes, oh. the men who seek them become more and more desperate. Your time and money. Ugh, I can't play this. I'm on YouTube right now. That's going to get me in trouble if I play any more of that.
It is a good scene, though. I am now telling the machine exactly what it can do with a lifetime supply of chocolate. Uh, okay, let's see who we're going to raid. Back in the 80s, I was waiting. All right, having a wonderful evening, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow for foil. This Saturday is... Wait, what day is for... Yeah, Saturday's 4.20, so we're going to be doing a special 4.20 stream. We'll probably be doing VHS stuff and other weird stuff while partaking in the THC. So prepare for that if you'd like. Um, and that's about it. Sunday will be the patron-only live show at 3 p.m. Join the Patreon if you'd like to be a part of that. Patreon.com slash Hannah Reloaded. You'll also get access to the previous VODs of all the live shows we've done um, on Patreon. So that's it. Have a great night, everyone. Love you, Mr. Blast. Bye-bye. Hmm.